Uh, hi, I'm going to talk about this title, which is Working Home and Technology System for the Future. But I actually also feel the title is confusing. Well, um, the idea behind the title is um, LM system is more at the low level than that uh, all the users know how to use it easily. So we want to build, build uh, some layer in the between, between the human layer and the LM system layer that make the, make the interaction easier. Yeah, but the thing is you think the scope is large, but I uh, try to explain it, but we are welcome for any kind of discussions. So the biggest problem is we hope to find a good way for a human to interact with AI. And the interface could include multiple layers of varying depths. Um, the what closer to human, we want a uh, human to use just natural language to interact with, with the LMs to use the AI. And then, uh, a little deeper is uh, we, we want to enable right programs that have, have a fine grained control. And then uh, to make the generation more reliable, we also want to enable the control and debug. Well, what I want to specifically talk about, about this is the programming level. So the problem is motivated by the transition from simple chatbots to LM programs. The pattern of interacting with LM flow become complex. As demonstrated here, the, there could be multiple LM costs with structures like parallelization, uh, forking, drawing, and chaining. And there could also, also could be external interactions. So pro programming frameworks for LMs are motivated to deal with the risk semantics of a program. Currently, we're building efficient serving engines to handle LM requests. Many, and where many optimizations have been done. But humans still need to define the generation process with fine grained control. And to trust the generated result, we need to validate and iterate with the, with the generations. And programming systems uh, fall somewhere in the middle, aiming to build a better interaction between the two to optimize control and validate the generation according to human needs. Mm, there are both challenges um, and opportunities in this new paradigm of complex LM programs. To fully utilize the structure and opportunities, we need to consider how to program these LM applications and how to accelerate the execution of these programs by optimizing across multiple LM generation costs. And I apologize for the big title. Actually, what I want to talk about is our preliminary approach called SGLM. Um, it provides an efficient in interface and runtime for complex LM programs. The, to motivate that, uh, the, the multi-core the multi -core structure, including trained costs and parallel costs, presents some interesting optimization <coughs> opportunities, such as cash reuse, parallelization, and short cuts in execution. These opportunities can significantly accelerate inference, but are largely overlooked by current systems. Um, yeah, then to give you some examples, um, there are multi tongue chat there. Uh, we have the human to chat with the chat bus, and then uh, in the first term, we send a, we send a uh, question and get an answer from the assistant. In the next term, we send a new new question, but we need to attach the chat history into the, into the prompt. So we have multiple terms, but those multiple terms will have some uh, shared prefix at different uh, level. So uh, for those shared prefix, we have the opportunity to reuse the KV cache so that we don't need to recompute the KV cache for them. Other examples like uh, futuristic learning that uh, in many cases that uh, we have the same futuristic examples used for each prompt. So, um, so these futuristic examples are also shared so we, sh we have the opportunity to use, reuse the KV cache for them. And the last case is a more complicated one. Um, in this technique, uh, the, the tree of thought, uh, we integrate LM generation costs into a search algorithm such as that first search. And this figure illustrates our search tree where the LMs will explore all branches within the search tree. In this scenario, different branches of the tree can share the search key story uh, like depicted by the blue boxes. And then, uh, yeah, and not, uh, so prior to our work, no existing system can manage all these reuse opportunities within the tree because the reusing pattern is not constant, but dynamically changing. And furthermore, imagine that these branches can also run in parallel. So because of the importance of these applications, 
there are some quite work on addressing either the programmability and runtime efficiency problems. However, their developments are evolving along separate projects, separate trajectories. On the front end side, there are some front end languages like Guidance and LMQL that can make the programming easier. However, they largely ignore the, the runtime optimizations. On the back end side, there are also inference engines like NVIDIA, TensorT, LM, VLM, and others. However, these engines are designed for single generation costs and does not know the program structure. So often miss many optimization opportunities due to the lack of the co-design approach. And because they cannot fully utilize the structure to do the optimizations, the systems run, can run slow in some cases and can perform redundant computations, especially on the computing the KV cache. However, detecting and utilizing structural information is non trivial And then to tackle such kind of challenges, here's our approach. The idea is to co-optimize both the front end and the back end to leverage structural information. To achieve this, we introduce SGLang, uh, a, a structured generation language for large language models. We then uh, co-optimize the, the front end, the language side, and the serving side, uh, the serving engine side. On the front end, <coughs> uh, we design a flexible domain-specific language. This allows users to easily write complex prompting techniques with structured information and additional constraints. And then moving to the backend by uh, receiving those information from the user side, we deploy an efficient running runtime system. For example, we, we employ smart data structures like the Radix tree to effectively manage the states of multiple costs. Um, in the middle, a strong program can be executed using either an interpreter and a, compi and a, or a compiler. If we use a compiler, we can do more global optimizations over the, the whole uh, prompt structures. By adopting this co-design strategy, we are able to implement several innovative optimizations. In the current progress, uh, the interface can reduce the code complexity and enhance control. With some case studies, we show that using SGL to write a program that interact with LMs can reduce, uh, can have uh, around two times fewer line of code. We also have the, the Radix attention optimization at the back end, which can reuse the KV cache for shared process so that reduce redundant computation for KV cache. And this can provide up to five times higher throughput improvement. Uh, the third technique called jump for decoding that is for constraint decoding that you can pass in a, a, a JSON or a, a regex expression to the to your, in your request so that you force want to force your request to align with the regex, regex formula formula. <coughs> and we add an optimization to this to a compress the finite state machine that try to skip some characters that you know what will be the unique solution for that, that string. Yeah, so this can provide you up to two or two, three times improvement in latency and super. In the future, we have the ongoing efforts and also the future plans um, with, uh, with two examples. The first one is we plan to integrate the, the language design with other tools and for example, the DSPY, which can enable, then enable higher level programming model because DSPY is a tool that can uh, automatically optimize the, the whole pipeline of uh, the Program, programming the, 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 the LM programs. Um, we also want to add more other, other uh, features that can allow more user hands. But first one is we are adding the support for reference-based backup decoding so that we allow user to send in a reference document to, uh, to help with the decoding process. And also we're implementing the, the KD cache reuse for retrieval so that we, will, we plan to not only reuse the KD cache for prefix, but also the KD cache for any part of the string. And then third one is, yeah, uh, so we, we are implementing the structured um, reasoning to enable self-reflection, self-backtrack, uh, by taking an input from the human to, to define what is the correctness. We're also working on preferred generation. So constraint, we mentioned constraint generation before, that is a pre uh, precise constraint that asks you to strictly follow a pattern. But preferred generation is user can add preference to the generation, just say, I prefer the generation to be like, for, for example, want the generation to be positive. Then we can manipulate the sampling process to increase the uh, probability for some tokens to make it be more yeah, positive. Okay, so uh, as an overview, the landscape of bridging human LM systems could be 
um, uh, have the multiple levels, as, as uh, mentioned earlier, natural language program and single cost. And there are a lot of uh, tools in this uh, in the open source community to work on the whole space um, from the on different levels and con adding control and optimize across different levels. Yeah, and then in the future, the, the question for the for this big problem is what should be the right abstraction for each layer to let different tools and different uh, developers to um, collaboratively develop the whole landscape. Thank you.